The social justice conversation has been stoked, and professional athletes are right in the middle of it, including Grand Rapids native Kayvon Frazier. After he witnessed George Floyd's murder, he shared a very powerful personal experience on social media. He also marched in a peaceful protest in Texas. He shared his message with Jack Dulles. In Grand Rapids, Detroit, all across the country and all around the world, protests continue as the call for social justice grows louder and louder. Kayvon Frazier is another example of why this movement is gaining so much momentum. Kayvon played high school football at Grand Rapids Christian, started Central Michigan, played for three seasons with the Cowboys, and now he's a member of the Miami Dolphins. And he joins us now from Texas. Kayvon, what emotions hit you as you watch what's happening across the country? You know, it's definitely emotional for us, um, especially when we constantly see, you know, you know, our, our brothers out there b being, you know, killed and, you know, tortured, you know, and all this other stuff going on. You know, it's definitely, you know, stuff that, you know, we all went through when we, uh, I went through when I was younger. After you watch that video of a Minneapolis police officer put his knee on George Floyd's neck and kill him. You shared a very powerful story on Twitter. Police here in Grand Rapids pushed your face against the wall, had your hands behind your back, and you were 10 years old. I'm going to let you pick it up from there. Why and how did this happen? You know, why? I don't know. Um, you know, I, I know it has to do with my skin color, though. Um, but how, um, so I was 10 years old. I was with my mom at, um, at Myers, uh, the grocery store. And my mom was just outside. And, and I was just hanging out with her. Um, she was outside uh, fellow, fellowshipping and talking uh, to some of her friends about uh, God. And, you know, she do that a lot because, you know, we're both really, really, really big in our uh, faith. You know, I was just standing there waiting for her to go in the store. And that's when I noticed, you know, four police officers, you know, approaching me. And, um, you know, I was 10 years old at the time, so I didn't think they was going to come to me. But, you know, when I seen them, you know, come up to me and say, put your hands behind your back. And they pushed me up against the wall, a brick wall. You know, my face was touching the wall. And, you know, they was definitely rough with me at 10 years old. All I could remember is my mom yelling, like, she's yelling at them. You know, she's, you know, using some swear words. Um, and also she's yelling at me and telling me not to, you know, make any false moves or, or don't do anything um, and stuff like that. And as a 10 year old, for them to really view me as a threat, you know, it's definitely traumatizing. And, you know, it showed me what I was up against, um, you know, just growing up in America um, as a black man. You know, it was so traumatizing to me that I just wanted to forget. And, and I did until this incident happened. That really could have been me at 10 years old. I could have, I could have been one of the next hashtags or, you know, one of the, the, the first ones. Kayvon, how does something like that impact you? And, and was, did that make you want to speak out? Oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, even if that never happened, I still would have spoke up because before anything, you know, I'm a black man. So, um, you know, I still would have spoke up. Um, but, but since that really happened, that kind of made me a little bit more passionate about it. And, you know, and now since, you know, I do have a voice, I do have a platform, you know, I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it to, you know, to get a change here. And I'm going to use it to the best of my abilities to help my people who don't have a voice. How important is this conversation right now? And how much further would you like to see this go? Yeah, man, it's very important. And I, I know it's, um, you know, I know it's a challenging a topic for a, a lot of people to talk about, um, but it's important and it's something that we need that needs to continue, you know, until we get, you know, change and until we get, you know, laws put in place and even farther along, or even after that, it's still something that we need to continue that, that um, you know, not only black parents need to have it with their kids, but, you know, white parents need to have it you know, with their kids at the dinner table. And that's where it starts. Um, you, you know, me growing up, my mom always had a lot of talks with me about how I'm going to be treated and, you know, how I'm going to be treated differently and what I need to do differently. And when I get pulled over, what to, what to do, don't make no false moves, keep my hand on the steering wheel, uh, you know, don't reach into the glove box, even if they ask for my license and registration, tell them that they can get it. Um, you know, even just, just small stuff like that, that, um, you know, may seem small to some people, but until incidents like this, then people realize it's a big deal. But, 
you know, and like I said, not and not only black families need to have it with their kids, but you know, white families need to have it with their kids also. So, so the next generation don't have to grow up like we had to grow up.